Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. So I'll go through the uh, the my topic in case we have any questions. Okay, so who benefits in the cloud and why? This is the purpose of this session. If you understand this concept, you are done. So whatever the traditional applications running in the cloud is more kind of cloud enabled applications, which are running on the virtual machines or either like there could be like a shared tenant, whatever it could be. That, that is our core, that are core cloud enabled application. With that, we have some issue during in terms of scalability. That's a key thing. And consider the grab app. If you are building a super app, right? If you are having the cloud enabled app, we may not scale. And if anything, you need to come back and do the changes, right? If you see that if you are using grab, one day you may see what the neat UI, the new features. Next day, maybe the new features. How we, we cannot build this kind of things if you are having the cloud enabled app. So cloud enabled map app is nothing but the same application that can run on data center also. Okay, so cloud native application is build the like a split the applications into microservices way. There are like multiple virtual machines are there or bare metals are there. From there, distribute the application components. For example, what is the web doing? What is the app doing? What is the DB doing? Inside the web, what is the front end? And what is the communication layer? Who is talking to the DB? So just split everything as a service. How are we splitting? As a service. That service is called as a microservice. And assign each service to either group of containers or like a single container for the specific job. And the specific job can be assigned to one set of developers or a single developer to focus on that task only. That is called a microservice. Okay. So what is the cloud native benefits? The first one is increase the efficiency. How? Because now the developer developers are more kind of independent. If anything needed, they can focus on the code level. If anything fails, they can come back easily, test it, and you can they can easily build it. And if you are um, if you from the infra background, how long it uh, from anyone from the infra background? Right? I just want to check with the question. How long to power on and power up the servers takes a time? Oh, you mean to say the physical server can boot up in five minutes? Oh. Okay, I'm saying like a server, then only you need to virtualization, then only the actual actual OS. I'm saying there are three things, right? Okay, consider there is a power outage in your data center. That could be any server, and if there are server runs on the ESXi and your application running for the VM. How long the downtime could be? Sorry. Okay. The latest service is it's a 27 minutes. 27 minutes downtime. If you're running an application, if any power outage happens. So 27 minutes, if you convert the SLA, you are lost, right? That's where the cloud comes into the picture. Someone can go on that and we can have like a high availability, one availability zone, another availability zone, even like multiple regions. That is the another version of cloud native also, immutable infrastructure. You don't need to like uh, upgrade or downgrade the infrastructure. Whatever maybe that happens, just build the infrastructure. Okay. And then reduce cost. You already know like what is server cost and what is the VM cost. And, and what is the compute, how the cost is calculated. Cost is based on for the specific application, what is the need? What is the need of compute and memory and storage and the network IOPS, right? Uh, even if you're running any, just come back, uh, think back like uh, five years before, if you're running a VM, right? If you, if you open the VM performance, right? It won't be there all the time, 100% utilized. Did you notice that? That VM won't be 100% utilized most of the times. Maybe like only few times the VM will be utilized, okay? Uh, but in the container, you are running uh, that uh, application or the microservice for a specific purpose. So it will run. So once it's done, maybe you can you can delete that or you can recreate recreate it, recreate it. That's a part of increased efficiency. Second one is reduce cost, of course, uh, whatever told. And next thing is ensure availability. You can run the container in any places. That could be one cloud or multi cloud, a hybrid cloud or data center. Okay. So what are the five key components of cloud native architecture? Someone told about twelve factor app, right? If you see back the twelve factor app or any one. Uh, if your software architect come, comes into the picture, he will see the cloud native in five lenses. First is how 
your application is immutable. The application meaning the application infrastructure is immutable. Immutable means you don't need to work on either upgrade or downgrade infrastructure. So the infrastructure has to be stateless. Second one is microservices, you have that, and API. And third is service mesh. Service mesh is how you are connecting, interconnecting your container. And the final one is the container. So let's see container, container benefit. So container benefits is more kind of like a, almost instantly. Uh, somebody told like a 15 minutes also like for the VM, the server boot up, right? Can you tell like how long it, how, maybe how many seconds it requires to boot up the, boot up the containers? Depends. That's a good answer always. But I'm saying average. In seconds. Just think the average answer is 27 minutes to seconds. How much that one? That's like another thing. And we can scale it efficiently. The grab is super happy here. Like we can build like multiple apps frequently. And something, anything happens, they can come back immediately and switch it off and recreate again. That's the beauty of containers. Okay. So now coming back to the developers, uh, developers lens, what is cloud native application development? Okay. So these are the development tenants, continuous integration, continuous delivery, DevOps and serverless. And right now there is one more concept called platform engineering. So under the platform engineering, everything will be part of that. So you guys know what is the purpose of continuous integration to agile, to increase the code, make sure there is no error there, somebody, no, nobody should be deleted, those kind of things. And continuous delivery is continuously deploying that uh, app, web app or anything like that, code apps into the cloud. It's kind of like how we are building the application, shifting the application and deploying the application. That's what we call it DevOps also, right? And serverless. Serverless is much more little advanced. Even if somebody says, hey, I don't want to manage the containers. That is what like a serverless comes into the picture. But serverless has its own limitation. You cannot do much customization also, okay? It depends. So for how do you choose uh, this application is uh, good for cloud native or not cloud native? Before I talk about the benefits, maybe I'll, I wanted to hear from you guys. How do we say? Awesome. Okay, maybe can you can you little bit elaborate of these three factors? How do you do that? Maybe you can tell me like key key characters. But uh, as I was saying, uh, if your application can be broken to multiple functionalities, and this functionality can you know sustain itself rather than you know, like uh, directly coupled or directly coupled or Yeah, that's the word I think. If your application is loosely coupled, if your application is able to do the loosely coupled native then that's a best fit for cloud native. Okay, okay. Can you go? Okay. Uh, so, when we are saying that we are doing app automation, so it can be comprising of different parts, refactor, then rebuilding, reshifting, right? So it starts with a uh, little yes. easy, simple one. Why? Because uh, many of the companies do not have the budget to do the full migration. Yep. Then in the panel, we start the decoupling part, right? Yeah. And we make the decoupled applications, we containerize those, and we parallelly, you know, uh, switch those with the monolithic ones. So then we are in the production stage. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So coming back, any, anybody wants to answer? Because I have like another five minutes only. I'm going to complete it. Uh, so how do we uh, choose this application is cloud native? It can be, as, as he told, right? That's a journey. So that's the journey for the existing application. The existing application is migrated most of the time. I won't, I can say like 99.99 percentage. No customer will use the cloud native from the on premises. They're not going to migrate. They migrate using lift and shift. From the lift and shift, they have like end to end visibility. They can use like some level of observability tool like app dynamics or a new relay for the to speed what is the dependency of the application. From, from there, they discuss with all the developer team. What are the functionalities can be decoupled? If uh, maybe the only the top layer, web only can be decoupled today, but DB cannot be decoupled. So take only the web, do the microservices, do the things. Once it's completed, then come back to app layer, then come back to 
DB layer. And DB, most of the time, customers still in the production, not in the cloud. It's still in the normal cloud enabled. Okay. So, some of the benefits of the cloud native application is faster development. So, you know that. And the platform independence. Why it's a platform independence? Why? Also, because it abstracts the infrastructure layer. What containers does? It totally abstracts the infrastructure layer. Same container you can run on cloud A, cloud B, cloud C. That's the whole purpose, and that's the reason like a lot of adoptions are happening. Okay. Uh, how many of you? Uh, this is my uh, maybe like uh, I have three more minutes. Just wanted to ask this one. How many of you know CNCF? I think most of the people know that's good. So they they take the front end and do the cloud native journey. Okay, they're like a group of ecosystem also. So these are like a CNCF member. You see, uh, you can say like a, whatever the modern companies, also like a traditional companies, everybody part of the CNCF. So what does that mean? In like cloud native is real. It's not something uh, they are going to do. Uh, before I come to the meeting, right? Like before I do the presentation, I talk few people. One from like a platform engineering background, and other from like a DevOps background, other from like infrastructure. I ask them. I ask only one question: Are you guys using cloud native in your customer environment? I ask it, right? Most of the people told yes. The same question I asked like a couple of uh, and year ago, they told our company has strict policy not to move to the cloud. Sorry, not not a year. I'm saying like a five years before they told our company has a policy not to move to the cloud. Two years before they told our company has a has a policy not to refactor the application because a lot of people don't know. The shift you see, right? Generally, uh, if you if you remember the Moore's law, right? Moore's law is saying like every 10 years there could be a change. It will be kind of like a cloud feeling. But the actual things right now happening is just two years. And cloud native is going to become kind of like a next to boom. Uh, just, just get started. This session is kind of like eye opening session. Okay. To understand uh, from the infrastructure point of view, also from the developer point of view, also from the business point of view, also to see the see the journey, how it can be done, what is the business benefit, how a developer can approach that, infrastructure people can approach that, and also business can approach that. Okay. If you have any questions, I'm happy to take. Uh, if not, uh, maybe I'll have like two minutes to take the questions. Any question? So the moment we go into using that add-ons which people do that upselling, right? So we go vendor locking. So there are regulations that work for a bank as well. Now there are regulations they say I go too deep in cloud native and it's in the serverless architecture in AWS, for example. I can't do let change to go with cloud. For example, S3 has is not available in Azure. Maybe GCP has another option for it. But it's not a link and ship, and it is not like same with containers. Specific to Kubernetes and containers, maybe it's platform independent. The more and more we go deeper and get adopted, it maybe it's like a thing. So you go and start using it and like lambda functions and things like that. So you will get up in, in the so game. Vendor logic is vendor logic. that uh, it's not a link and ship anymore. So yeah. you should know the balance that you get. Yeah, that's correct. And the, one of the disadvantages of the cloud native, maybe the two disadvantages I would say is the learning curve. You can have a lot of things. Maybe uh, people comes to um, people think like the cloud native means only Kubernetes or containers. Not only that, it's much more observability is there, and also like uh, connectivity, security, and somebody told like zero trust. Security is very important in the And the thing is currently most of the times these kind of services natively available in cloud. Uh, and it's kind of like a lock-in, but a good architect can do the trade-off. That's where the actual architect job. And you ask, right, what is the role? That's where you are there, right? We, we, we have to balance, we have to trade-off, where we need to use that. And it is also not true, all the services are locked with the cloud. Most of the time, that's why the CNCF have like a third-party ecosystem. The important thing is, it has to be platform independent. But it's a journey. I agree with you. That's a journey. So any question? That's a good question. That's a good question. 
So highly you know, when we are talking about the advantages, we also need to know what is the disadvantage, right? So any questions? Maybe I take another two questions. Okay. Uh, cloud native membership is kind of like open source, right? They help the community to grow. In, in short, if I wanted to say, there could be like a, uh, for an example, since I'm part of Cisco, maybe I'll, I'll talk from the Cisco point of view. Cisco builds a lot of cloud native applications and brings to the and share to the CNCF. If you take like Google, Google built a GKE, the Google, sorry, Kubernetes, and push to open source. And it's, it's maintained by CNCF. And CNCF builds a lot of open source projects also, funded by this company. It's kind of helping their business building at scale. Good. Any questions? Any one more question? Yes, last question before I. Okay, this is the key slide. Who owns the application? Everyone. I hope it is useful to everyone. Please feel free to follow us by any one of the links here. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your day.